Matrix Halo. Look at this, 128 gigabytes of memory in a tiny little package. But the question I get is, should I buy that for gaming? I want a portable PC or a small PC, a small form factor PC for gaming. How is it actually for gaming? And there are laptops or tablets in this case, the Flow Z13 based on Strix Halo. All three of these devices, Framework Desktop, GMK Tech, their mini PC, and their Flow Z13, this is all Strix Halo in three different configurations. Each one of these is a 128 gigabyte monster. But the answer to the question is like, should I buy this for gaming? is probably mostly no, but these are an incredible platform for AI and compute and everything else that can also game. So let's talk about it because you may still wanna buy these for gaming or portability or, or other reasons like that. And if not, what are the alternatives? I've got a whole bunch of things I can show you. Okay, just to recap. Like this, this is a framework desktop. This is awesome, it's modular, there's a lot of fun. Inside here is a normal ITX motherboard. You could use this in another system. That's gonna be important in just a minute, but this is 128 gigabytes of memory. This is a five gigabit ethernet platform. It's got a lot of storage, it's got two M.2 ports. It also has an X4 PCIe expansion slot. That X4 slot, you could use it with a GPU, but you'll need an adapter because it's not designed to power a GPU, even if you use a breakout cable. So Strix Halo is a platform to add a GPU to only with like a USB, a USB 4 external enclosure. Same deal with the GMK Tech. Like you could use an Oculink adapter and you could do some custom stuff, but really these platforms are not meant for adding a, a discrete GPU. It might make sense to buy these uh, as a portable machine for gaming because all of these have the uh, gaming performance equivalent of about a 4060M. So they can game really well. I mean, 1080p, 60 FPS with pretty good texture settings. It is hugely impressive what they're able to do and in an impressive power envelope. But the cost, like the cost for this kind of thing is about two grand. It's gonna be over two grand if you get a portable system like a laptop or a, you know, an Airflow Z13. So what could you get desktop gaming wise for a budget of about two grand? This is a fractal machine and this is in a designer case. We're spending kind of a lot of our budget on the case. I think there are some uh, less expensive alternatives, but we're starting with the $2,000 plus option. So yeah, we'll, we'll, st we'll start there. So this is the Fractal Era. The Terra is a little smaller. You get the Era and the Terra ITX options. This one's a little bigger so that it can hold a discrete GPU. This is basically just an ITX case. ITX, small form factor. You can build a small form factor machine like this. And yeah, this is quite a bit bigger than this, but for a $2,000 budget, we can actually get kind of crazy. So for a $2,000 budget, let's say four to $500 of your budget is gonna be for your case, your power supply, and your cooler. Now our fractal here is gonna be at the higher end of the budget. Another option you might look at is a uh, uh, Cooler Master. Cooler Master has an NR200 case that we've reviewed previously. That case come, there's a version of that case that comes with a power supply and an AIO. And it makes a, a lot of sense getting the bundle because you save a few bucks and for a full desktop size build. You wanna go for a CPU? You can go for a 9950X 3D. Yeah, the 16 core monster processor. These are 16 cores, but the 9950X3D, monster 16 core processor, $650. I think we could probably do that. The 9070XT at about $600, that would be doable in this build. We've also reviewed the 9060XT from Asus, the Asus Prime. 9060XT, 9070XT, same physical card, or same physical size pretty much from Asus. A couple tweaks, differences in the cooler, but not overly huge. Uh, sometimes you gotta pay attention to the size of the card versus your ITX case, especially if you're gonna go for the Terra, which is a little smaller. Not every card is gonna fit in that ITX case, but you can do it. We've reviewed ITX motherboard options from both ASRock and MSI. There are some good options out there for a small motherboard like this. And a small motherboard like this will support up to 128 gigabytes of memory. You can run two 64 gig DIMMs on this platform and have 120 gigabytes of memory. Just remember that Strix Halo is as much memory bandwidth as a four channel Threadripper. So the memory is twice as fast in Strix Halo versus the B50. Although it's really only twice as fast in APU GPU centric scenarios and not so much on the CPU side. It is a little faster on the CPU side, but really the memory bandwidth, 
the place where the APU is able to take advantage of that is on the AI and GPU side of things more than the CPU side of things. It's a subtle, important distinction. So it's, you know, that's another vote in favor of, I'm just gonna buy it for gaming. This, if you can deal with the slightly larger size or you don't need the ridiculously small power envelope of Strix Halo. Storage is the last thing in the budget. You know, that's another $100, $200, depending on what it is that you wanna do. So rough budget on screen. That's the kind of system you can build that is roughly similar cost to a 128 gig Strix Halo platform. And the only advantages of the Strix Halo platform is more memory bandwidth for AI context, being able to run you know, larger 60, 120 billion, you can run GPT OSS 120B because it's Q4 on Strix Halo at a reasonable speed. And you'd be hard pressed to do that on a desktop platform versus this. 16 cores, 16 real cores and a 9950X 3D with amazing cooling because of the NR200, that's great. I think the bigger bang for your buck is also an option if you build. And you've got a lot of options for bigger bang for your buck. I mean, obviously you can tweak the parts that you choose, like you might choose a 9800X 3D instead of a 9950X 3D. But I would also point out, you can get a mobile CPU on an ITX motherboard. We've reviewed those from Minis Forum and others. And so if you wanted to get something like the BD-795i SE from Minis Forum. They have these with regular mobile processors. They have these with mobile processors that have 3D V-cache, also up to 16 cores. This has a built-in heatsink. All you need is a fan. So you'll save quite a bit of money because overall, this costs less. Overall, it's less features. This motherboard is nowhere near as featureful as the, uh, you know, the Phantom Gaming B850 here, but it gets the job done. And it's also upgradable memory. You're gonna be using notebook memory instead of desktop memory. This platform also supports 128 gigabytes of memory. We've tested that. If you wanna run two 5600 DDR5 SODIMs in this that are 64 gigabytes, you can, that works fine. It has two M.2 uh, SSD slots, that's PCIe Gen 4. And then it has a PCIe 5.0 X16 slot. Even though it's a mobile CPU, this will get a lot done. This, uh, if you get the 3D vCache version, it's a little better performance than the 5800X 3D. It's not quite, but it's close to as good as the um, 7800X 3D. Uh, it's nowhere near as good as the 9950X 3D or the 9800X 3D for gaming. Um, but again, unless you're buying the highest end GPU, that's probably not really gonna matter very much. Um, if you're buying it for gaming, a 9070XT right now is the biggest bang for the buck. If you get a, you know, an appropriate power supply or you find a 5080 at MSRP, you could do that in this kind of a build. And again, for general usage and heavy gaming, something like this is gonna be a bigger bang for the buck than Strix Halo. And that's, you know, that's the options. That's the whole universe of options. And you could go even cheaper. Like you could get a 9060 XT, you could get a, a GPU from last gen. Some of the 7900 XTX GPUs have been on fire sale lately. You could use those, that'd be great. And this platform lets you do that. Or maybe there's, maybe the 10,000 series GPUs are coming or the next generation GPUs. If you get something like this, pay attention because it's got a built-in heat sink you don't use the AIO with this. So if you're thinking about getting that cooler master case that comes with the power supply and the AIO, you actually wouldn't get it for this motherboard because it has a built-in cooler. This would be a better choice, you know, for a, an ITX case that doesn't have a built-in built cooler. Or you could get the Cooler Master NR200 that doesn't have an AIO. Uh, or you could get one of the, the fractal cases because those don't come with, a, with an AIO or a power supply or something like that. And so choosing those things, you save some money. And if you have any questions or you're curious or whatever, you can hit us up in the forum at level one, just tag me, I'll try to help you. But uh, yeah, there's some affiliate links and things like that, which also drive some of this content. So thank you for using the affiliate links and our subscribers and everything else. But uh, I love Strix Halo, I love what it is. I love the AI stuff. I love being able to run my own reasonably intelligent AI on a machine that I, that I that I own and control. And for that, two grand is a steal for what it does. But don't buy that unless you wanna do that too, or you wanna understand that, because this is a much bigger bang for the buck. And that's uh, the video that I wanted to do. That's the questions that I've gotten a lot lately in the forum and everywhere else. And so I just wanted to share. I wanted this level one. it has been just a ramble, a chat, a fun little sort of let's build and do stuff. Uh, more of these if you want. I don't know. If you're interested, you know, engage below, comment. Let's let's talk about it. I'm Wondless Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.